Welcome back. In this video, I'll talk about system calls in Pintos. So the first thing we need to understand is how users view the user view of system calls. So let's get a sense of what that means. So just for example, if I if I if I add the command prompt, type in something like cat a file, right? So what I'm really doing is I'm running a program called cat. But what does cat look like? I mean, what does what does the program look like? It's gonna op it, it's gonna basically open a file, open this file, read from it, and and then display it, the display is uh, print the contents of it. Um, all these are actual system calls. So, so let's take a look at uh, a real example of a cat um, uh, executable, uh, the source code, at least uh, we can look at that in Pintos. So let's go here. Um, this was our Linux right here. Um, I'm going to go back to my uh, Let's go back to the main folder, which happens to be my project three folder. Uh, and there are some examples here. Let's take a look at one of those examples. Uh, in fact, one of those examples is the cat program. So I'm gonna um, So that's the cat program. So let's take a look at it and let's uh, blow it up a little bit so we can see better. And I'm gonna grab this from here and see if we can walk through what's what it really does. So here is our cat program. And what we notice here is that the user is making a bunch of syscalls. So let's look at all the syscalls that this program is making. Here's the first syscall, which is an open system call. Uh, the printf actually results in an, in turn results in a system call, but printf uh, calls in turn a write system call, write to the std out. So it does a system call, that's a system call. Uh, here's another read system call. Um, here's another system call, which is a read, a closed system call. So all these are system calls, but what exactly are these? So turns out that though we are making, from the user program, we're making all these calls, what we're really doing is we're calling, uh, uh, as, in, as we know, even in Unix, um, though there are uh, upwards of 200 or 400 system calls, um, all system calls are really uh, just a syscall. There is a function called syscall, which all of them get eventually sent to. Uh, and what the syscall does is it gives a call number and any arguments, a variable number of arguments, right? So for example, when we do open, we pass one argument. When we do read, we pass one, two, three, argu three arguments. And when we cause cl close, we pass, pass one argument. So the arguments will change. So let's take a look at how that looks like in Pintos. So again, I'm gonna go back here and I'll terminate this. Uh, I don't need this guy. So let's go here and go one step back and and let's go to the lib and the lib there is a there's a folder here called user user which will give us a sense of what that syscall looks like and let's again make this guy a little bigger so in fact the open system call which we just did actually is a call that looks like right here so this is let's go down so that is the actual call we just did. But what does it really do? Well, as we will notice here, oops. As we notice, what it's really doing is it's in turn simply calling the open call 
all it's really doing is it's calling this so a call from here really goes here and this guy in turn is calling something called a syscall one this one here because i'm only passing one argument and what does that do well, let's go back here into our picture and escape if we go higher we will notice that syscall one is this call right here this it's actually a macro but it's a macro only because we're going to call an assembly function from here uh, so that's what this guy is so let's look at that so which means that the call to that is really a call from here to this but what this is in a sense doing is it is calling a assembly it's executing an assembly routine and this is an actually an an interrupt it's a software interrupt and the interrupt happens to be the interrupt number the number for this interrupt happens to be 0x30 which happens as we will see in just a second that is that is our uh, our trap or uh, uh, sorry as uh, our way of entering the system entering into the kernel so what the kernel ought to do is because what the user is really doing is he's putting a bunch of things on the stack and in fact you will notice what he does here is he pushes arc zero and r and the number the first thing which is arc zero was the syscall number and the and and that which is happens to be a pointer he pushes those two on the stack and then he raises an interrupt which means that the os so at this point the user at this point the user has put the an argument whatever argument in this case uh, the argument he put if it's an open system call this happens to be a uh, the file the name of the file to open file name is what this is right this is the file name and here he's going to say that i am performing an open so open is mapped to a syscall number there is every system call system call is uh, all system calls are are given unique numbers and we can find out what those numbers are uh, in fact let's go here and we will see uh, if i go back one step i should find in this syscall um, it's probably up one step here uh, the syscall all the syscalls are numbered and there's there in this file so we will see that it's an enumerated data type so uh, in this in this enumerated data type for all the system calls we see that we see that open happens to be right here so that's a zero one two three four five and six so we're going to put a six there right and the stack pointer at this point is pointing there and we trigger an interrupt and trigger interrupt zero x three zero so the hardware all that the hardware does is it says is there a interrupt uh, is there a corresponding uh, handler for this interrupt which means the responsibility of the operating system then so this is the os this is the os perspective of system calls is the os has to do two things first it needs to register a handler for interrupt 0x30 and we should do this at the beginning so the best place to do it is in our syscall dot c there is a syscall in it 
and in fact that's exactly where we're going to do it so in syscall init we will register so let's take a look at the code uh, again we are here let's quit this guy and let's go back a couple of steps uh, i'm gonna do user frog and this is our sys call dot c and right now this is call dot c only has two things here uh, actually let's go back let me raise this guy a little bit So let's just uh, grab this from here. In fact, we'll grab both of these. So what we see here is this is registering the handler. And what handler does it register? It says that on the occurrence of this interrupt, I want to execute this handler, which happens to be this function. In other words, it's just a callback that you set, a callback that you're telling to the hardware that whenever this particular interrupt occurs, I want you to call this subroutine. And this subroutine is registered, so every time I make a system call, I will enter this as call handler. So which means that if I were if I were processing the uh, open, then I would get here. But right now, this is this is the uh, given to you as as just because we have to give you some code. We said it just prints the system call has occurred and we exit. So ideally, what this will do is we will we will what we need to here do here is we need to look at the fact that the stack at this point has the the call number and the argument if it's only one argument there'll be one argument if there are multiple argument there'll be arg1 arg2 and so on right so i'll only know that after i look at the stack pointer but the esp is pointing here but how do i get to the esp well what the way interrupts work is there is a frame in the the frame pointer which is the interrupt frame pointer has gives us access to all the 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 context of the processor so f which is this frame pointer the f's esp will actually be that guy right there f esp is this one right here now what what we will do then is we will just grab whatever is there and we can switch on it so we'll we'll copy that let's do an int syscall number uh, let's just call that call number and we'll say call number equals f esp and we simply dereference that to get whatever it points to if i do that I will get the call number. So our syscall handler is a one big switch statement after this. It's a switch on this call number. And you'll say, for example, uh, depending upon what call it is. So by the way, because we already saw, so we saw here, we saw here what the name is. We're calling it sysopen. So we can, we can refer to that same name. We can say, we can say here case sys open because by the way you will notice in this in here that we actually included the system the same header file so we can refer to those those numbers uh, so we say sys open and then we handle whatever needs to be handled as far as that particular sys call is don't forget the break after this right so that's how system calls are handled from within the operating system. So what system calls are we supposed to handle? So the syscalls we are supposed to handle are of two categories, two types. The first type is process related. And the second type is 
is file sys related. Uh, I should have some, let's see, oops, nope. okay, so these are system calls related to processes. So what are our system calls that we do? We do exec, which is to create a process exit to quit a process wait for a parent to wait on a process these are the these are the ones so in fact what you will see is in my big switch statement that we talked about there will be a case in fact i'll write write the code that you will have you will see uh, will be the final answer in fact so when sys exec on six x sys exec all you're really gonna do is so we'll I'll put a comment here check to make sure check command line is valid and we'll see what this validity of pointers is all about but once you know it's valid just call process execute and pass whatever the command line is that's it and break so it's as simple as that um, but because most of the work we're doing inside process execute so this one just becomes like a marshal that that directs all the all the calls to the right places uh, so the things to remember uh, when we're doing system calls related to processes are um, all processes resources must be freed on exit the child can exit before the parent performs wait so this is always a tricky thing so you have to make sure that um, make sure that if if uh, the child exits and the parent hasn't reaped the exit status the child doesn't quit and and leave because the parent is going to hang forever uh, a process can perform wait only for its children so you'd have to check that because wait takes a pid and you shouldn't be waiting uh, for a child that is not yours um, that is that is a requirement uh, wait can be called twice for the same process the second wait should fail uh, nested waits are possible uh, pinto should not terminate until the initial process exits um, so the initial process remember that um, th that that we did something like this we said process uh, wait followed by process execute and this is our initial process whatever the initial process is initial command so what's going to happen is process execute is going to return a tid and process wait wait is going to wait for it now right now process wait inside process wait it doesn't do anything it just returns so so one of the first things that you will do to make make things work is you'll make sure that uh, because if process wait immediately returns then process wait returns which means run task returns and run task returns run actions returns returns to main and main just quits before the program even had a chance to run so so we'd have to take care of that so we'll get to those when we write some code so the second set of calls are oops are sys calls related to file system and these calls are are again pretty straightforward uh, we talked about uh, the open system call but there's create remove which is to remove a file um, file size which will tell you what the size is and all of these calls are easy to implement most of them are easy to implement simply because they are based on uh, the the implementation the file sys implementation implementation of the file sys is in, is under the file sys folder all the calls are there so all you have to do is uh, on each of these for example uh, i'll take an example which is uh, not uh, open but uh, uh, well, we'll see what those are in just a second, but uh, the the most of these uh, fall into two categories. Those that work on file names, so these three that work on file names, 
and the rest of them work on file descriptors. And this is, this is where things get a little interesting because what is a file descriptor and how does it get implemented? Now, you may recall we saw this in, uh, in when we talked about in Yash that there is such a thing as a file descriptor table. And this file descriptor table is currently not implemented. You implement this as part of your of part of you implement as part of user prog because all those calls and files all the files calls that I'm talking about there will be a file sys open for example you give it a file name and it returns but what it returns is a file pointer actually it returns a struct the data type it returns is a struct file. But what you have to remember is open returns a file descriptor. So you pass a file name. The in response to that, the syscall handler will call files is open, but files is open returns a, a struct file so you as part of your implementation will add this data structure which is a file descriptor table and obviously the best place to add it would be in the thread control block so the thread control block so i'm just going to call that my struct thread which is my thread control block inside it it should have a file descriptor table and what this file descriptor table will be, will be just an array, if you will, of struct file array. And this file descriptor table will keep the mappings where the index into this file descriptor table will be the, the fi file descriptor. And the contents of this are simply struct file. So zero will be your standard in one will be your std out and two will be std error and the first file we create will have will be three let's say and this one will point to an os data structure which is of type, type struct file so from this point onwards every call you get after the open is done every call you get will will be referring to this file if let's say this file was some file foo that you open then foo will be referred to by three so after the open you will return a three here so when i want to write write to this file uh, subsequent write to this file will say write the file descriptor three right and then it will say It'll say uh, whatever buffer I want to write and the size of the buffer. So all references will be through that. So you have to maintain that. And as files get created and destroyed, you have to uh, update this data structure accordingly. Let's take a look at what else was there as part of this. I think that's pretty much it.